Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the scroll bar form control on a Microsoft Excel worksheet. So I have here some fictitious data that we could set up for a counseling study. So let's say that we want to determine if a primary complaint level of an independent variable, so in this case depression, anxiety, or substance use as a primary complaint of a participant is related to what kind of therapy that they would select. So let's say in this particular study what we're trying to capture is what type of therapy these individuals, individuals with primary complaints of depression, anxiety, and substance use will choose. And their choices would be existential, cognitive behavioral therapy, or group counseling. So this might be something you would see at an agency setting uh, where you have perhaps uh, a few groups running, a counselor that specializes in CBT, and a counselor that specializes in existential therapy. And your agency might be arranged so that the primary complaints, you know, the, the type of clients you have coming into the agency, the primary complaints tend to be grouped uh, as depression, anxiety, and substance use. Those tend to be complaints that you would see frequently in the particular population you want to study. So what you're really doing here with this scroll bar and with this worksheet is, is a data collection. You want to build uh, an Excel worksheet that allows you to quickly add and subtract values to each of these categories as participants self-select into one of the three treatment groups. So as you can see I've already configured the scroll bars for the first two so that if you click uh, on the left button you decrease the number and on the right you increase the number. So I'm going to show you now just using this last group how I configured these uh, scroll bars. So as you look up top, you'll see a developer tab. If you don't have a developer tab uh, displayed, just go to File, Options, Customize Ribbon, and where you see Developer here, uh, that will not be checked off for you. I check that off, and then click OK. And you'll have a developer tab with these options on it. So an important distinction here is you look at the insert selection, you can see there are form controls and there are ActiveX controls. For this tutorial I'll be using form controls. And you can see there's two that look fairly similar. There is the uh, spin button and then the scroll bar. I'll be selecting the scroll bar. So you just select it and you get the crosshairs here and you'll drag it onto the worksheet. So I'm going to move this one up right into the cell that it will be modifying. And I'm going to resize a little, try to get it a little closer to the size of the other um, scroll bars I've used. And what you want to do now is to right click, you want format control. So before we get to the control tab, I just want to show you, you can size it right from here, size and rotate this control right from here. Now I just kind of looked at it to judge the size, but if you want to be more precise, uh, you can size and rotate and affect the scale right from the size tab. But I'm going to be looking at the control, and you can see it has a current value, there's a minimum value which is set to zero. And, and you wouldn't want a number lower than that, for example, a negative number, because you're talking about uh, participants. And a maximum value of 100, uh, for most scenarios, that would probably be fine. But if you have a really large study, you would want to increase that. The incremental change of 1, you can change that. I think that makes sense, when again, when counting participants. And then you have the page change value of 10. Uh, you probably wouldn't use that, uh, but that's what it's set at by default. I like to keep the 3D shading, so really what's important is to decide the cell link. So click into the cell link 
and then select the cell D2, which is the cell that this particular scroll bar will modify. And then click OK. I'm just going to move this up a little bit. Now, just to keep the sizing a little easier, I'm just going to uh, copy. And then with Control V, I'm going to paste the other two scroll bars. It just makes it easier. It keeps it more consistent. Now, notice right now that these are all affecting the same cell. So no matter which one I click, it's affecting the same cell because the cell link will not update. So I'll right click here and go to Format Control and I can see the cell link should be D3. So I'll just change that to 3. I'll click OK. And then I'll do the same thing for D4. So now I have all the scroll bars functioning so that uh, somebody comes into the agency and their primary complaint is substance use and they pick group counseling. You click here and you add one to that value. Uh, it's a pretty easy way to keep track of an ongoing count. The one thing I like about using the form controls on a worksheet is how they work well with graphs. So if I were to highlight uh, this whole area with the data, go to insert, and just use a standard uh, 3D uh, clustered column chart. And I'll change the background to black, make it stand out a little more. So this is kind of the default, uh, default graph. And you could set this up below as I have it here, uh, below where you're counting the data, you're counting the participants. So say that you were to decrease this value, you can see it, it changes right on the graph. Uh, similarly, this value, and it even rescales the, the uh, y-axis. Say so you have uh, a number of participants come in a particular day that choose that, that have a substance use as a primary complaint and choose group counseling. Uh, you start to add them in, you can see that the graph changes. So this is a good way to uh, see quickly what the numbers are looking like. Uh, you know, is there a, a preference uh, for these three levels of the independent variable across these three treatments? So you can you can see it numerically here, and you can see it graphically uh, down here. Now there are many options for this graph. I have a separate video that covers uh, what Excel calls a column chart. Um, I typically refer to this as a bar chart. In Excel, uh, they have the uh, bar chart as uh, this type of chart, uh, but I'm more accustomed to calling a column chart a bar chart as it would be referred to in uh, software such as SPSS. But regardless of what we call it, uh, I have a, another video that, that gives you the details on how to change the characteristics of a column or bar chart. Depending so the last thing I want to show you just for in these scroll bars, uh, I've been using the incremental change uh, to make modifications here. So I'm just clicking the arrows. Again, we have the page change set at 10. So if I don't click one of the arrows, but I click like in this region between the slider bar and the arrow, you can see it changes by 10. So that's what that page change is for. So when I uh, right click this and look at the format control. This is the page change value here of 10. I hope you found this video on using the scroll bar form control in Microsoft Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.